Russian losses in Kharkiv sector reaching divisions level, soldiers cry about great losses. Deputy Commander of the 3rd Separate Assault Brigade of Ukraine, Maxim Zorin, said that Russian troops in the Kharkiv sector had to withdraw some divisions and rotate them. He wrote about this on Telegram. In particular, Zorin said that the videos of Russians crying about losses in the Kharkiv sector are true. In fact, they have huge losses at the division level. They have to withdraw and replace some divisions right now. So far, Russia's plans to break through in the Kharkiv region from both sides have not been very successful, said Zorin. But he emphasized that it is not a case of everything being calm. This is just another batch of Russians, which will be followed by new ones, people, equipment and attempts to break through. The enemy is still constantly trying to put pressure, conducting local assaults and replacing the destroyed units, wrote the deputy commander of the 3rd Brigade. The Russian army is facing its highest rate of losses during its full-scale invasion of Ukraine so far, with over 70,000 soldiers likely killed or wounded in May and June, the UK Defence Ministry said. The increase in losses is connected to Russia opening its new front in the Kharkiv region while maintaining the same pressure rate over the entire 1,000-kilometer front line in the east and south of Ukraine, the ministry said. Although this new approach has increased pressure on the front lines, an effective Ukrainian defense and a lack of Russian training reduces Russia's ability to exploit any tactical successes despite attempting to stretch the front line further, the statement said. Russia's casualty rate will likely continue at an average of about 1,000 soldiers a day over the next two months, the Defense Ministry predicted, as Russia continues to try to overmatch Ukrainian positions with mass. Russians have been slowly pushing forward against Ukrainian forces in the Donetsk region at the price of great losses. U.S. plans to open second front and stab Russia in the back in the Caucasus, American commentator. The United States is not abandoning its plans to defeat Russia despite statements about the need for dialogue. Moreover, Washington plans to open a second front by stabbing Russia in the back in the Caucasus. This opinion was expressed by American political commentator Paul Craig Roberts. The United States does not need a sovereign Russia. Washington will continue to implement plans to defeat Moscow. One of these plans is the opening of a second front against Russia in the Caucasus. To this end, the Americans are planning to organize a color revolution in Georgia, removing the current government. The Ukrainian conflict was completely orchestrated by Washington. He tries to blame Russia for this, but in fact, he set it up himself. And now we see how non-governmental organizations that Washington finances in Georgia are trying to organize a color revolution there in order to open a second front against Russia, Roberts said. The United States is now increasing supplies of long-range weapons to Ukraine and are slowly lifting restrictions on its use on Russian territory. Roberts added that the Georgian government has been resisting pressure from its Western allies for a surprisingly long time, repeatedly thwarting attempts at a color revolution. The United States is not despairing and is only stepping up its activity in this direction, hoping to break Georgia before Kiev suffers a crushing defeat. In the current situation, it is vital for the United States to squeeze Russia in a vice in order to deliver an unexpected blow to Moscow in the back. Recently, Russian Foreign Intelligence Service said that Russia has data that indicates the decision of the United States to seek a change of power in Georgia following the results of the parliamentary elections on October the 26th. The data received by the Foreign Intelligence Service indicates Washington's determination to seek a change of power in Georgia following the results of the upcoming October 26th parliamentary elections in the country. U.S. President Joe Biden's administration has already developed a large-scale information campaign to discredit the ruling Georgian Dream Party, the statement read.